All right, we move ahead to one of the big winners on Saturday night at UFC 262 in Houston. Huge victory for one Andrea KGB Lee. She submits Antonina Shevchenko in the second round and now is back in the win column for the first time in almost two years. Andrea, congratulations on the victory. How are you? I'm really good. I'm, I'm really happy, you know. I'm proud. I'm excited because, like you said, first time in two years. It's really hard to believe. It's weird when you say that. I know I didn't, I, it's kind of a damper way to start the interview, but, uh, <laughs> still exciting stuff. Like, I mean, to, just to kind of go back to that, there was so much riding on this fight and a lot of things surely were probably on your mind coming off of three straight losses. You're back in Houston where this skid began with the Lauren Murphy fight. So to sit here talking about a win and a finish and that kind of a dominant performance, how does that all feel? Man, uh, it's exciting. You know, I've been on cloud nine, I guess you could say. Um, you know, I just felt good getting back in there, but fighting with a clear mind. And, um, you know, I just felt like I, I could see everything. I can, I could hear my corner so well and so vividly, like, I just felt like I was in the fight, you know, for the first time in the last couple of fights, like my head was there, not in space, um, but in the fight. So, you know, I'm, I'm just really happy, you know, it was a great performance. Yeah, I mean, that was like one thing that was so noticeable to me even before the fight started because, you know, you and I have been having these conversations for a while now. You have been through a lot. And while you've always had like a really good poker face and you did your job to the best of your ability, like immediately when Bruce Buffer started introducing you to the crowd in Houston, like you looked loose as a goose. You looked free. You looked happy. And the things that you've been through over the last couple of years, it's hard to remove all that fully, but it seems like you've been able to create enough space from it that as much as you could heading into the fight, like yeah. you seem much happier, much more free. Like, am I reading that right? Cause even in the, the, the Montana De La Rosa win, that sort of freedom in your mind didn't seem to be there. You still got the win. And then even after you beat her, it was all about you know, win and get a title shot and Valentina Shevchenko and all of that. It was just so much for you to process. But this one, it just stuck out to me that you were just different, not just in the fight, but you as a person. Like, can you elaborate more on that? Like, am I in the wheelhouse? You are. And I'm glad you noticed that because, because yes, even though I did get that win against Montana, um, I, you know, I could, I was not, I was not as focused in that fight. There was still a lot going on, you know, behind closed doors, you know, that, that, you know, people don't know about, there's always something going on in someone's life, you know, but I feel like for the first time, like I wasn't, I didn't have any of those distractions, you know, it was, um, I was able to breathe and just like focus on my fight. I was able to go and do a training camp, like in, in California and Colorado and just kind of get away and just focus on preparing for what needed to be done. And so I really felt that going into that fight, you know, I felt my confidence back. I felt like my skills were sharp again. And I just felt like there was no limitations on what I could do in there, you know? So I believe that showed, you know, I got to, you know, I got to show a well-rounded fighter, you know, and I feel great about that. That KGB swagger was back in, in full effect. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Did did, did you feel a lot of pressure heading into the fight? Like, I, I mean, you got, you got the win now and hindsight is everything. And I know there's nerves heading into any fight, but did this one feel different? Like, did you feel extra pressure at all heading into it? I did feel, I did feel pressure. I mean, you know, I, I knew I could not get another loss and I needed this win. Um, cause four straight losses in a row. I mean, that's, that's, that's worse. That's just worse. I mean, having three already, you know, it, it doesn't look good, but um, and they were all three close decisions, but, you know, I really needed to go out there and, and prove, you know, to everyone and prove to myself, you know, that I, I still belong in the UFC, you know, and I mean, they are making cuts and I don't want to be on that chopping block. So, I mean, I needed to get that win and, and that's what I was able to do. Um, but yes, there was definitely some added pressure going into the fight, but I just had to like, not try to focus on that and just go out there and have fun. Antonita obviously is a, is a dangerous striker, especially in close in the clinch, but out in space, you seem to have her all figured out. Like you were timing her jabs very well. You were landing good combinations. You stung her good in the first round, but the clinch, there's one point in that first round where she was landing those knees to your body. Like it seemed like over and over again. What was that like? Because it looks pretty painful watching the broadcast, but what was going through your mind in those moments? 
it might have looked painful watching it, but but no, I, I actually they they didn't hurt. They didn't really phase me at all. Um, I mean they, I mean they could they could have potentially, but they didn't. I mean you know just being honest, like those they didn't bother me at all. Um, I just knew that it didn't look good, and so I needed to break that clench and and, and get out of that. But yeah, I did get kind of stuck. I mean she has a really good full plum clench. Um, she's she's nice and strong in that. But we we planned for that. We trained for that. You know, and I, I don't. I was able to break free and, and keep the fight in like working for me, you know, and making her fight my fight. Yeah. Overall. I mean, besides that, it was a great first round for you. You had a lot of success, the strikes, the takedown at the end. How confident were you feeling heading into the second that you were able to come out of those clinch situations and you pretty much took all the momentum heading out of that first round, man, like at the end of the first round, like walking to my corner, I just felt so good because I wasn't breathing heavy. My, my arms weren't, weren't heavy or bloated with lactic acid, neither were my legs. Like I just, I just knew that I was in good shape. Like I, you can tell, like at the end of the first round, you're going to feel it. But I didn't even feel like we had even fought for five minutes in that first round. Cause then, you know, my last couple of fights, man, I'm going to the second round, you know, and I'm like, man, I'm like why do I feel exhausted? You know, I trained hard for this, but like, I just felt like a different person in there, you know, and, and going into the second, I just, I felt great. I knew I had the first round and I'm, and I, you know, still had getting a finish, you know, one way or another on my mind. And, um, it just, man, I mean, I worked hard for it that, that second round, but, uh, <laughs> man, happy that it just worked out the way that it did. Cause she almost had my back, but I was able to turn that into a, a hip toss and, it just kind of went from there. Yeah. And, uh, you, you mounted her, the triangle was, was cinched in for what seemed like an entire round. And, you know, you, you're, hard. you're busy down there too. You're laying those brutal elbows. And then, you know, finally you, you were able to cinch the arm and you got the tap. How tired were you getting in that spot before you were able to finally get the arm and, and get the submission? My legs were, my legs were giving out. They were getting really tired because I was squeezing. I mean, I know maybe it didn't look like I was doing everything right, but she just, she just will not tap to a choke. Like, I guess she has like a small neck or something because I mean, I was, I was pulling down on the head. I was getting the angle. I had my arm like reached all the way through, um, her belly, you know, and wrapped around the waist. And, and I remember I was squeezing my legs tight together, but I could still hear her breathing a little bit. And she was just kind of like waiting and being patient. And I was like, man, I've got to do some damage because right now she's just chilling. I got to make her, I got to make her like sweat a little, you know? So, um, I knew that, that my, my best, the best way to finish her was not going to be a choke. It was going to have to be the arm. So I just had to loosen her up a little bit and so I could get that arm free to, uh, stretch it out. So we, we talked the two year number before we started, but right before we hit record and, and got on here, I looked this up because this is a crazy number to see. That was your first UFC finish, but it was also your first finish in 1,331 days, Andrea, 1,331 <laughs> days, almost four years between finishes. Is that just wow. a wild number to hear said out loud, especially since you finished so many fights early on in your career? It really is. I, it, you know, and I, I, I expect more for myself, you know, I feel like I should be getting more finishes and, um, you know, I, it's, it's hard to believe that that's my first finish in the UFC, but, um, you know, I, I've, I've gotten to where I wasn't necessarily playing it so safe in this fight. You know, I wanted to go out there, have a smart fight, but I mean, I wanted to like take a chance, you know, and I did, I took a chance, you know, going from, from Mount or, from that crucifix position into the a mounted triangle. I mean that, that, and then fall into my back. I mean, that is taking a chance. Um, but typically in my other fights, you know, I've been like, you know, tr winning rounds and I, I just, I don't like to fight like that. I haven't fought like that for Invicta and legacy and LFA, you know, I, I'm always out to get a finish or at least try to keep it from going to the judge's hands. So, uh, to me, yes, that is crazy for like first finish in four years and, uh, my first win in two years. So it's just, it's crazy to me. When the tap happened, like it looked like there was this invisible weight that just flew off of you. It was like this sort of vindication feeling that, you know, this is the fighter I've always said that I can be. And it was right there for everybody to see. Like, did you feel like just this huge weight lifted when the referee told you to stop and the fight was over? Yes, I did. Man, I was excited. I just, I knew like if, if she wasn't going to tap, I mean, I was going to make it, I was going to have to, 
I was going to have to make that arm not usable for the next round. So, cause my legs weren't going to be usable. <laughs> so I was gonna have to take something from her. Um, but man, I, I'm just, I'm, I felt so good after getting, after the ref stepped in, you know, I mean, I, geez, I just felt so much emotion like build up and I was just, just wanted to hug my corner, you know, and just celebrate with everybody. It, it, it felt really good. You know, I mean, there was a lot of, a lot of doubters out there. I mean, I, I know even even the commentators probably didn't think that um, my striking was as good as it was. But, I mean, my striking is really good. I just haven't been able to show it in the last couple of fights. Like, I want to. And so, you know, I, I felt good out there. You know, I felt calm. I felt honed in. And I was focused. I know, like, heading into your last few fights when we were talking, like, th- there's just some fun matchups that you were a part of. And you're like, we're going to go out there. We're going to get a... Uh, we're going to go out there and get fight of the night. We're going to have a barn burner. We're going to each get fight of the night. This is a performance bonus worthy performance, Andrea. You didn't get it. And, and I know it got bumped up to $75,000. I know it didn't go your way, but were you a little bums that you, you didn't get that bonus? Well, of course I was, but you know, when you're fighting on a stacked card, it's going to be, it's going to be hard because there's, there's so many incredible athletes, you know, fighting on the same card that you are. And I just knew it was going to be hard. I, and not to mention the 75000 the extra bonus, the extra little incentive that it gave to everyone to get a finish. I mean, there was, there was like knockouts and weird finishes all night. So, I mean, I knew it was going to be hard once, I, once, once uh, Dana had announced that. I was like, man, it's going to be easy. You know, I got to go out there and really make this one exciting. But... Um, you know, it, it happens. I'm just happy, you know, that I, I got, a, I got a win. I got finished. I mean, it was a great performance and regardless of getting the bonus, I'm sure maybe, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I'm just hoping like maybe I'll get like a little, uh, locker room bonus. Who knows? <laughs> there you go. I think but, it's you know, well, well deserved. Dana only gave out, was it two bonuses? He gave the fight. He did a fight of the night and two performance bonuses. Yeah. So, I mean, like he normally here, he has been given out like four bonuses, right? <laughs> he has. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of like the catch 20. <laughs> there you go. So hopefully maybe he'll throw you a couple extra bucks. I, I think it's, it's well-deserved. Um, you, you, so is it fair to say that your relationship with fighting in Houston is, is in a better place than it was 15 months ago? Yeah, I would say, you know, I was kind of, uh, I was, uh, I was worried, you know, uh, I think that like in my interview, I was asked if I was, if there was a slight hesitation to like fight for, um, uh, fight in Houston. And I said, yeah, there was, I just, I felt like, and that I might be on their, on the, on their bad side because I did make a post, you know, about the judging and stuff. So, and, and, and how I felt like, you know, judge wasn't paying attention and that's kind of like what it looked like but anyways you know I, I apologize I mean if I offended anybody or whatever but I I wasn't I don't have any like qualms with Houston Texas I have no issues with Houston Texas I have no he- issues with Texas in general I'm from Texas and I love Texas so you know I of course if I ever get the opportunity I want to be able to fight in Texas in front of everybody that you know all my loved ones and my fans um but you know, I, I mean, I'm happy that I was able to go out there and get my hand raised for the first time in Texas. <laughs> there you go. A couple of times I fought there, I have not gotten my hand raised. It's just never gone my way. So it's exciting to finally have it go my way there. You had mentioned in your post-fight scrum that, you know, t- you wanted to kind of get back in there pretty quickly, but you also wanted to focus on your boyfriend, Tony Kelly's next fight, which should be an absolute barn burner with Trevin Jones on July 24th. I can't wait for that fight, but are you looking to get in there after that? Or if the right opportunity comes along, are you willing to jump on something a little sooner? I am willing to jump on something a little sooner. You know, I want to stay busy. Um, I do want to, I want to be able to focus on, on his fight. Um, but if the opportunity presents itself, you know, and, and I'm, I'm still, I'm in great shape, you know, and I'm, I'm ready to go then, then I would jump on it. Um, but other than that, you know, I want to be able to focus on his next fight coming up and then focus on myself. Are you at this point concerned with rankings and titles and all of that stuff? Or did that first run you were on sort of the pressures that come with that? Did that kind of better prepare you for it this time around? Like what's your thought process now in terms of the future after that win? 
maybe I'm better prepared for it now. I, I still like, I don't want to necessarily like, I don't want to like go online and look up where I'm at, where am I right now? You know, I'm, I'm not, I don't care about that. I didn't really in the beginning, but like I said, people, people want to let you know where you are, you know? And, um, I feel like that kind of puts a little unnecessary pressure on, on top of everything else, you know? And so I don't necessarily want to think about that or focus about that. I just kind of want to, I want to fight and it, like, I want to make my way up the rankings. I do, because of course I want an uh, opportunity to fight for the title. Uh, but I don't want it to be in the forefront of my mind. You know, it's, it's not the, it's not what I want to focus on. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting you say that. Cause I was talking to Lauren Murphy a few weeks ago and a lot of people feel like she should be fighting for the title right now after the run that she's been on. And she's just like, you know what? I'm done like focusing on that. I'm not going to yell for title shots. Like when it happens, like it'll be because I earned the title shot. Like there'll be no questions, nothing. So she doesn't want to put that pressure on yourself. Like you were talking about, are you kind of in that same boat right now? Like, you know, give me opponents. I'm not going to say no, I'm just going to go and I'm just going to just enjoy fighting right now. Uh, yes, uh, yes, I'd say so because I mean we have we have a short window of opportunity to be able to do this, and um, I want I mean like I just want to fight. I just want to get out there and have another uh, opportunity like I did um, Saturday. You know, and I, I want to continue to get my hand raised and put on good performances. And um, I do want to fight for the title. Don't get me wrong. Of course I do. I mean, that's what we're all. That's what I'm working for. But I also don't want to get uh, caught up, focused on necessarily the wrong things, you know, and add more pressure to um, the pressure that's already there. You know, uh, there's always pressure going into a fight. I mean, I always get butterflies and get nervous and, you know, there's always that little bit of anxiety that that, that comes with it. Um, so, you know, I just I just don't want to I just don't want to get sidetracked and you know? I don't want to like I don't know get disappointed. I don't want to be disappointed and let myself down. There you go. Just keep the expectations in a, in a healthy place and yes. the chips will fall where they're supposed to. Yes. Did you get, did you get to watch the rest of the card? I did. Uh, there was some that I missed. I missed some, but I did, uh, when I got back to my hotel room, I was able to finish the rest of the card and I got to see, um, I got to see Matt, um, co-main in the main. What did you think of, uh, the main event, Char Charles Oliveira, that crazy fight with Chandler. What'd you think of that whole thing? Yeah, that was, that was insane. Cause you know, uh, Chandler almost had it won there in the first round and you know, he, he certainly could have finished him, but I, then he ended up on the ground with him and then, uh, Charles was able to recover. And then that was just crazy. Charles coming out there in the, the next round and he sniped him and wow. I mean, I, I was not expecting that. I wasn't expecting that at all. You know, I mean, I was expecting a great fight, but I thought that maybe Charles would still be trying to recover, you know, and Chandler still had the upper hand, but um, that's not what happened. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, Charles Oliveira. I mean, that's, you know, good good for him. You know, he's been working for it for so long. So, you know, I mean, it just goes to show. We just keep, keep putting in putting in blood, sweat, and tears and put it in the hours and get the fights. You know, I mean, it can happen. Sometimes it just takes a little while. Yeah. I mean, you gotta have, you're, you're probably going to draw some inspiration from that as well. I mean, that was his 28th UFC fight and that was his first title shot and he's a champion now. So there's no rush, right? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's had so many incredible fights along the way, you know, and, um, he finally got his opportunity and I look at him he got his hand raised. He's got the strap. I mean, you know, it's, it's been a long time coming and, you know, he deserves it. Absolutely. It's also been a, a good road for you. A incredible performance on Saturday, Andrea. It was just, it was outstanding from start to finish the striking, the, the ground, the submission was nasty. It was just really well done. I know you've been tr waiting to, to show people that side of you for a long time and you were finally able to do it. And I'm glad to see you're in such a great place right now. Congratulations on the win and, uh, look forward to see the next one for you. Yes, sir. And I'll come on and we'll do this again. <laughs> yes, let's do it.